If alcohol inks are translucent, how can we use them to paint on black, or any dark color for that matter? Stay tuned and find out. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. For today's project, we're going to use alcohol inks to paint on a black ceramic tile. That's right, a black ceramic tile. Because sometimes a black background is simply beautiful, especially for simple subjects like flowers, for example. But again, alcohol inks are translucent, so how are we going to pull that off? The answer is the white alcohol ink, or the white mixative, as Ranger calls it. We're going to be using Tim Holtz alcohol inks by Ranger for this project. Now this year, Ranger added six new colors to their line. Dandelion, Coral, and Pistachio in the Key West set, and Crimson, Aquamarine, and Sepia in the Rodeo set. But you can always buy the colors individually too. Ranger also added two new metallic mixatives rose gold, and gunmetal. For this painting, I'll be using the new coral and dandelion, as well as a few other colors, which I'll show you along the way, including one of last year's new colors, limeade, which is one of my new favorite greens. And I'll list all the colors in the description box below the video. You'll need a black or dark colored ceramic tile, or another option is to take a piece of glass or acetate and paint the back of it black and then use the front. The glass from a cheap picture frame can work very nicely for something like this. You'll need a couple of inexpensive paintbrushes, small ones, ideally one that comes to a fine point. And I use a really cheap ones for alcohol ink because alcohol ink is a solvent, so I don't ever want to use it on really good paintbrushes. So really, like kids paintbrushes will work just fine for this. Some alcohol blending solution. And I'm also going to use some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Anything over 90% is good. You don't need both, but I like mixing the two sometimes. And then finally, something to mix your inks and alcohol solution in. So I'm going to use this little baby palette. If you're working on um, a Ranger craft mat like I am, theoretically you could just mix your inks right here too but eh, I've got a palette, so I'll use that. Okay, let's start this. The very first thing I did was clean my tile with alcohol. I wanted to make sure I removed every trace of fingerprints or other oils that could prevent the inks from adhering as well as they can to the tile. Now, about the gloves. <laughs> I don't know that you necessarily need gloves for this project, but I'm certain that if I don't wear them, I will spill ink all over my hands. But if I do wear them, I probably won't spill a drop. <laughs> Another advantage of the gloves is that they keep me from adding fingerprints to the tile as I'm working on it. Now I'm going to thin some of the white mixative. And I'm just going to add a couple of drops in the palette and then add a couple of drops of the blending solution and I'm also going to add a drop or two of alcohol. This will do a couple of things. It's going to give me a light airy look to the white that I paint on and also it'll let the ink stay wet in the palette longer. And now I'm just going to mix it up. Now I don't want my brush to be dripping wet, so I'm going to offload some of this. And your brush will dictate the width of your petals, so if you want wider petals than the ones I'm going to paint, use a brush that's a little bit wider. 
Determine also where you want the center of your bloom to be. I don't want mine to be dead center, so I'm going to come off center a little bit and maybe start here. And all I'm going to do is drop my brush down onto the tile and then flick out. And I'm going to do that a bunch of times. In sort of a sunburst like pattern. Now I'm going to let this layer dry. Now for fun and dimension, I'm going to use three colors. I'm going to use Flamingo, so I'm going to drop myself a couple of drops in the palette there, and thin that down a little bit too, and some Shell Pink. This is an older bottle, so it has the older style label. And then finally, Coral, the new color. With a thin brush, I'm going to start out with the Flamingo. Now, you don't have to use the same colors I'm using. You can use whatever colors you want. It's your bloom. And all I'm going to do is, from the middle, is sort of pull out. Now, what's going to happen, which I actually like, is it's going to sort of wipe out some of the white in the center and it'll sort of take you back down a little bit to the black and I don't mind that at all because it kind of gives the flower a little bit of texture and don't worry we'll return some of the white and I'm just flicking the pink out and then I'm gonna let that dry and now I'm coming back in for some white. And I will once again paint white in. Now the white is going to take on the pink beneath it. So it won't be white white anymore. But that's fine. And I'm going to let that dry. And now I'll come in for some shell pink and kind of decide where I kind of want to take the white down. Maybe, maybe I don't want any white showing or I want less. And wherever I want less, I can cover it up with the shell pink. And I like all the little ridges that each of these strokes sort of creates. It gives the bloom texture, some dimension, even sort of a 3D quality. A little white again. Now obviously you can stop at any point. You might have decided that's enough layers for you and you're done, but I want this to be a really dense bloom. And now I'm going to come in with the coral. And I'm also purposely opening up the center a little so that I can add my yellow middle. What I'm doing now is creating more texture. Now for the center, I want to decide now where the sun is. Is it shining from here or from here? The way the bloom is, it looks to me as if it's almost looking down somewhat. Um, since these petals are longer than these, so I'm going to have the sun actually be here, sort of looking at the flower this way. 
sort of almost straight across. So maybe it's an early morning sun. And I'm going to use butterscotch as my first yellow and as my dark yellow. And I'm going to put the yellow right onto the brush. And I'm going to decide that my center will be here, like this. I'm just going to tap, and again, I'm taking advantage of the fact that the tile is black. I am letting black come through on purpose so that it adds shading for me and texture. I'm just tapping until the ink starts to really dry. And then I'll come in with my dandelion and come in here. I might even pick up a little bit of white. Tap, tap, tap. And my center is really taking shape. Now, if you wanted this to be a true yellow yellow, you could clean out the pink in the middle first so that it doesn't impact the color, but I didn't care so much. As I prepare for the stem and the leaves, I'm going to show you another way that you can paint with the inks on black. Rather than lay down white and then paint on top of the white. Something else that you can do is actually add your color to white and then mix that up and, and that will create an ink that shows up on black. So let me show you what I mean. Since I'm not gonna need white anymore and I've already sort of polluted the white a little bit when I tapped my yellow into here, I'm going to Use the white that's in here and use Limeade and some blending solution and my hind point brush. Mix it all up, get the Limeade all mixed in with the white now and then use it as my ink. And I'm just going to take this down like that. And see, because white is mixed in, it's showing up on the black. Whereas if I just put limeade down by itself, put a drop of it here, you'd never see it. There is a drop right there, but you can't see it because it's translucent. So it's pretty much disappeared. I'm gonna add more. So now there's a whole puddle of it there, but you can't see it. And to show you that it's there, here's tissue, and I just wiped it up. And this would be the case with any of the inks. They'd all appear almost invisible on the black. But if you mix it in with some white, now it's almost like you have a new ink. And again, since this is a made-up flower, I'm just going to make up leaves, too, because... I have no idea what leaves this flower could have, so I'm just going to make generic leaves. But we don't want this to all be one color. We want these to have a little bit of dimension and shadowing as well. So for that, after putting down a good enough amount of color, I'll play with some botanical and I'll just put that straight onto the brush. And again, the light is coming from this side, so the darker side would be here. And if I want some extra shading, I can add a little oregano. 
<laughs> and now I sound like I'm cooking. But the color name is oregano. <laughs> sort of like a brownie green. And again, this is to give everything a little shading. So it's not just a flat color. I'm going to do a little touch up around here. I'm adding a drop of white to the shell pink. It's the lightest of the colors. And brighten up that area around the center so that it pops a little bit more. Yeah, that's brightening up that area nicely. And here's another tip. One of the nice things about working on tile is that if there are stray marks that you don't like, you can easily scrape them off. I'm using a fairly dull X-Acto blade and I'm just coming in to little strokes that maybe I think were more than I needed. So I can just come in, clean them off like they were never there. Maybe your leaves weren't as nicely shaped as you wanted. Maybe you think a petal was a little long, like this one was longer than all the others. So I'm shaping it and making it more in line with the length of the other petals. Alrighty, I am going to call that really done done now. So, now you know how to paint on any dark surface with alcohol inks. Ranger has over 60 inks to create with, and now I think you see some of the versatility of Snowcap, the white mixative. It extends the range of colors even more. So what colors will you play with? Let me know in the comments below and tell me what you thought of this. Would you like to see how to paint other representational art like other flowers, animals, landscapes, maybe out of space themes? Or do you prefer abstracts with the inks? Let me know with a thumbs up if you want more inks in general. As always, the colors I used and links for getting supplies will be in the description box below. I truly appreciate you sharing this video with your friends, using my Amazon links, and an extra special thank you to those of you that are sponsoring the channel. The more you can help this channel, the more videos I'm able to make. My hope is to get to do this full time for you. So stay tuned for more alcohol inks, resin, and acrylics. Remember to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Go let your creative nature shine. I'll see you next time. Bye now.